All right, welcome to all of our social media followers. I am. We are live here today with Rowan Trollop, SVP and GM of the IoT and Collaboration Group at Cisco, as well as Dave Michaels, who is an independent analyst, thought leader. SVP and GM. <laughs> all voice, of the above. Voice of the collaboration industry. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, guys, so today we're gonna to be talking about the future of collaboration, changing the way we work, um, and especially the things that we announced yesterday at our collaboration summit. So first question is, why would we use cloud as a deployment option for collaboration? Why is that a good idea? Uh, it just seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> Everyone <Yeah>. else is, right? <laughs> Look, uh, because it's better in like almost every way in terms of delivering more secure, more available, you know, updatable, um, live software. I mean, the cloud has completely transformed the way that we, that the industry uh, builds and delivers services, right? We've moved from delivering like static products to live services. It's basically better in almost every way. And um, you're seeing the results in the product. I mean, go look at Cisco Spark uh, and, and you'll see the, you'll see that the, the fact that the engineers every day wake up and get to look at the stats of how people are using the product in an anonymous way so that they can improve it. So they can say, wow, a lot of people are clicking on this or a lot of people are doing that. Maybe we should improve that path and we are able to get live feedback from our customers. So you know, it, it reduces complexity, it improves responsiveness, it's just better in every way. Awesome. Would you agree with that, Dave? The cloud isn't really terribly a new concept in IT. A lot of industries, uh, CRM and, and medical records and whatnot have already made that leap and enterprise communications has been plodding along, but I think we're, we hit an inflection point where, where cloud is becoming the, the main go-to approach. <coughs> okay. Um, I've got a couple, a couple <coughs> more questions myself here, and then Dave, I'm going to hand it over to you to have a conversation with Rowan. But so, touch a little bit more on how cloud enhances the collaboration experience. How does it make it better? Well, so to pick up on what Dave had just said, you know, it's not a new concept in IT. You know, Mark Benioff obviously was sort of like the famous sort of like father of this sort of new motion, uh, not new anymore. Um, and that was good for, uh, you know, that if you look at the web 1.0 or I don't know what you call it, 1.0, 2.0, but sort of like the first wave of sort of um, enterprise applications moving to the cloud, um, those were mostly static applications. They were like web-based apps. Doing real time is much harder. It hasn't been until just recently the tech technologies have sort of evolved and that we've able to be able to create the technologies to deliver a real time service over the cloud. You know, we started with WebEx um, a long time ago, um, and but, but really there's had to be a lot of innovation over the last 10 years to deliver a service as complete as Spark and do it completely over the cloud. If you tried to do this 10 years ago, it just wouldn't have been feasible. The, the mm -hmm. technologies weren't there like the elastic scalable compute infrastructure and global deployments and all that other stuff like that the industry wasn't ready but we're now finally ready for real-time communications delivered as a service over the internet we have a question from periscope are either one of you a ccie <laughs> by any chance ccie not yet not I'm, yet I'm, I'm i'm planning on starting soon though okay also guys we have 90 yeah, viewers <laughs> right now so if you just want to say hi to our viewers just hi. shout out um, and viewers, let us know where you're tuning in from. You know, we get a lot of global followers, so I'm curious to know where you're all joining from. So let us know by putting it in the chat. I want okay. to touch on, on, on that yeah. last question, though, because one of the things that the technology has changed, uh, as Rowan described, but these things have really changed the way we work and where we work as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, uh, we're always connected now, and uh, the cloud is just inherently a more mobile-friendly uh, deployment approach. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, totally. and, and you know, mobility. You know, I, 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 uh, I sort of think about the mobile device as the place where all collaboration starts and ends, because you wake up in the morning and your mobile device is there, and you go to sleep. At least me. I don't know. Maybe I'm unusual, but you know. And then you go to sleep at night, and you're, you're, you've got that phone is always with you. It's transformative for collaboration because mm -hmm. you know the the reality is people are always available now. You know, and if they don't want to be available, they can switch off very easily. You know, swipe up and turn on do not disturb kind of thing. So. It really has transformed from the days where you're on a desktop and you know you can only be contacted when you're actually sitting at your desk. And when you walk away, it's like you're not available. So we had to invent a whole thing called presence to like recognize when you were online and offline. And when you had when you hadn't typed on your keyboard for a while, it meant that you were no longer at your computer, which meant you won't respond. 
Well, that, just, that concept is like gone. I mean, now we have APNS and notifications of mobile mm -hmm. devices, and you walk away from your computer, you have your phone in your pocket, it buzzes. I mean, it's totally transformed everything, kind of. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got some questions. All right. I've got some questions. <laughs> All so right. I, I've been talking to a lot of people at uh, Collaboration Summit. And it's interesting as they talk about Spark because coming, by the way. oh, it's great to be here. It's good yeah. coffee, um, and um, it's interesting because uh, when I talk to the video guys, they say Spark is a video solution. When I talk to the UC guys, they see Spark as a UC solution. Um, what what would you say? And you've been you've been talking to partners and customers. And what would you say is most misunderstood? Or what what is what is the conversations you're having? In the last day, or just in general? So, so these announcements here. Okay. Um, I think the thing that's most understood is... Mis misunderstood. Misunderstood, yeah. Good point. Uh, the thing that's most misunderstood is that under the umbrella of what, what is Cisco Spark, you know, which basically has the three, we talk about three big categories of capabilities, messaging, calling, and meetings. Uh, the calling piece is the, is the least understood, surprisingly. Uh, not surprisingly. And... Um, the messaging and, and meetings piece, I think people get instead of like, okay, you get meetings and you can plug in your hardware endpoints now. You know, you're starting with your SX10 and we'll roll out with the MXs next year. Um, so I think that uh, idea is understood and messaging is understood. It's like, okay, it's everything in messaging. Um, so the first, probably biggest misunderstanding is what about that calling piece and how does this affect HCS and everything else? And I look at it from the customer back. From the customer's perspective, I don't really care. How I get a phone on my desk, I just want a phone on my desk. I want it to work. Yes. And I want a soft client that works really well so that I can step away from my desk and still receive my phone calls and I can make calls on my desk line. And if somebody calls my desk, it's going to ring here. That's number one, the basic capability they want. They want some basic functionality, you know, call hold, transfer, blah, 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 you know, music on hold, you know, your voicemail, et cetera. How that gets delivered is not relevant, I mean, it's not something that the customer should really care about. And what we've tried to do is, is explain to the world and to our customers is, look, you could sell to every customer, every customer can now buy this awesome new service called the Cisco Spark service, and it comes with three capabilities, messaging, calling, and meetings. Calling can be delivered in a variety of ways. It could be delivered and connected to your existing calling system. So many customers would say, well, I already have a phone system on my desk. The answer there is great. You can still use the Spark service, and we're gonna hybrid connect your existing uh, premise you see in. I'm a customer, then the next type of customer is, that's great, I want Spark and I want the meetings and messages capability, but I'm an HCS customer. Hey, no problem. We can still give you phones on desks and continue on that path with HCS. Finally, you're a new customer and you don't have any of those three yet. What should you choose? Well, now there's a new option. You can not only choose to buy a B, 6K or 7K or on-premise UC or all those different options we have, or HCS, you can now choose the Cisco Spark calling feature. And that is, you know, has a certain set of features that can be evaluated and determine whether that's right for the customer or not. So from the customer's perspective is like, uh, and, and if I was a partner, I'd be thinking, let me abstract that detail from the customer. Let me go, go to my customer base and say, I got this awesome service and you plug in calling in a variety of ways. Let's determine which is the right way for you. And the customer may not even know and know or care, frankly, which one it is on the back end. That's number one. There's another one around Jabber that we can talk about. Well, okay, so you're, you're touching on hybrid there, so let me ask you, because most, mo hybrid's an abused word in our industry. It totally is, yeah. And, and most hybrid deployments are some sort of a shotgun wedding or marriage uh, where two independent solutions are being forced to work together that are trying to actually compete with each other. Uh, and and so when you describe hybrid, you talk about combining Spark with, with your existing you know HCS or premises-based solutions. Is this a transitional strategy, or is this actually the strategy? Is this is this what is this is hybrid the destination? That's a great question. Um, All my questions are really good. <laughs> they really are. They're very thoughtful. Being the voice of the industry. That's right. It's, 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 uh, it's, so, it's a burden. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that um, uh, it's not a transitional state. Is, is the first sort of answer to that question. Um, I think that uh, for. Um, the way that we, so again, you're right, the, high, the word hybrid has been uh, overused. Um, the way we're thinking about this is you already have premise-based or HCS infrastructure with a great call manager there. We had three services we announced that will connect that existing infrastructure and make it look seamless to the cloud, you know, and, and call service connect, call service aware, and the calendaring service, and there will be more. 
And I think that's not gonna go away anytime soon. So think about the calendaring service cycle. A lot of customers are not gonna move away from Microsoft Exchange. And even if they do move away from premise exchange, that calendaring connector is gonna be valid for their cloud connector. So I think we're gonna have a lot of connectors down the road that we're gonna to continue to extend. We're gonna introduce new ones to plug in the different ex external services that you would need, whether it's calling or calendaring or other things directly into our cloud. Uh, and Active Directory Sync is another one that's a best part of that. So I think it's not a transitory state for us. Um, and uh, it's gonna be something that's gonna exist probably you know, for a really long time. We have a question from Periscope, Rowan. Um, how do you see Spark being used in the education sector? Mm -hmm. Uh, huge opportunities, in fact, so so quite a few universities in higher ed have contacted us and are using it for their school, actually for their students and their faculty, so as a way of communicating to students, faculty, and even some parents back in, you know, not necessarily higher ed, but uh, lower education, so um, the big, big opportunity there, you know, the ability to share documents seamlessly with text and content, every, virtually every university CIO that I've talked to is looking for an answer to this problem. So they've got not only the traditional problems of um, uh, that you would see in enterprise collaboration, uh, but they sort of even extend it further because they have their student body. And their student, you know, the interesting thing about the student body is uh, these are mostly younger people and they have different expectations than your average knowledge worker who comes into a job or has had a job for 10 or 15 years. They're coming from the world of mobile and Snapchat and everything else, and they're looking for that kind of an experience. And that's one of the things that's driven us, actually, to bring the best of the consumer world into this experience. It's why, for example, we're in integrating um, you know, animated GIF support and like you know emojis and all these other things, because people expect to be able to communicate. It's not just business, boring, dry text communications. Like People coming into work expect to be able to communicate in a much more rich way, easily send photos, easily. We're, we're finding that the type of communication we do in business is transforming. It's not just a boring dry email. It's a high five GIF or you know a cat video, God forbid, <laughs> because it's it's more you know emotive. Mm -hmm. and it's better. Yeah. The, the problem with the education or really any vertical is they always have all their whole world of applications no one else has ever heard of, and you are spending a lot of time at this event talking. Of, you've added a new word. Uh, You've added open to your, it used to be delightful experience, magical, and now all of a sudden you have this new word open. That's right. So can you can you elaborate on from a vertical perspective with that question we got, uh, how does open fit into the, your, your vision here? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and so education is a great example. And, and we already have, I think, 50 app submissions. So we launched the platform, the developer.ciscospark.com platform, and we've already had 50 app submissions and some really cool things. Um, for example, Alto Cloud very uh, company created a cool integration where when a customer hits your web landing page uh, it'll fire an event into spark for the people who are sort of figuring out what to do about that and there's a bot and someone can grab the case within spark by actually responding to the bot and then jump back in and fire a response back into the web so they've used spark in a really creative way actually it's super cool, it's cool. Um, in education, I can see all kinds of examples. I, I, I've been touring schools recently here in the city. And you, know, and, and you go to school, too. Yeah, I, I recently that. learned. Yeah. That's right. Um, they put up a, a, a map of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> they put up a map of the United States, and that's like a teaching tool that they have. Um, and they want to be able to communicate with the students about that. So I can, I can see you know, distance learning becoming a real big thing. And we're already using telepresence uh, to connect higher ed um, institutions like Wharton, for example, I was just recently at Wharton. We've connected Wharton's East Coast and West Coast campuses. So you threw me off there because you said you've gotten 50 app submissions. So is there an approval process to be an app no. or how, how does that no, work? No, actually there's no approval process. We don't, we're not maintaining a marketplace or sort of some sort of control point. Uh, we've asked people to write integrations and apps and submit them to us so that we can sort of vote on which ones are the coolest or the best to give some visibility. We want to give visibility to those apps. So we actually want to be able to promote those apps to our customer base. Um, but anyways, back to higher ed, I think you're going to see us uh, and Spark actually transform higher ed because distance learning is becoming a big thing. Online learning is becoming a big thing. And of course, collaboration is, in my opinion, the biggest thing to transform education. Like the idea, the way we went to school was you take tests by yourself sitting with no internet connection. Well, the test of the future is gonna be Go solve this problem. There's your there's your computer and there's the five people you need to work with to go figure it out. If you guys can connectively figure it out, 
then you pass. Because you imagine, can you imagine coming into work um, and being told, here's a problem I want you to go to solve. Don't use the internet and don't talk to anyone in the company. That would be totally insane. Well, that's like our testing system in school, so that's got to transform too. We have one more question, and then Dave, if you want to close this out, that would be great. Um, are we segmenting the market between HCS and Spark? Well, HCS is part of Spark. Okay. HCS delivers the calling service for Spark. Maybe the question is referring to Spark calling. The answer is no. Spark calling won't have a hard limitation on the number of lines that it supports, but it will have a certain feature set. And what we've positioned that as is business critical telephony. So you can see it's a lightweight, streamlined feature set of telephone, you know, telephony solutions, whereas HCS offers the richness of all telephony solutions. Uh, and by the way, our partners can mix and match. So if you want to sell a combination of HCS for your HQ and you know Spark Calling for your, 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 your remote sites, no problem, we can connect those together. I, I think I understand that question because I came in uh, with a different perception than I have now. Um, I came in thinking that HCS is done and that that was the writing on the wall, and, you know, and this is that it's over. But my impression now is that uh, if you want a pure cloud, no premises solution, that the way you're going to get that is is with, with full features and contact center and everything else is going to be through HCS and Spark in this vision. And probably, if anything, HCS is going to see uh, is going to be stimulated uh, some de uh, demand increase. Yeah, I might so too. So I've gone through that. I think I understand that question. Mm -hmm. I've gone through that cycle. Okay. All right. So I get to ask the last question here. So last uh, question for Periscope, and then we're going to switch it over then to we Twitter. Do, then we do. Yep. Uh, chat. Um, you've announced uh, quite a bit uh, yesterday and today, and uh, you've been both CEO out of the hat. Um, so the question is, is this sustainable? I mean, you're a big company, you're a behemoth, right? And so how much innovation can you keep on doing? Uh, what's the, at, next, at next, a year from now at Collaboration Summit, is it gonna be a 30 minute keynote? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Uh, you know, if you look over the last three, so is it sustainable is your question. Uh, I think we need to accelerate innovation right now. There is a huge, I think there's a huge opportunity in collaboration. If you look at um, what happened in 2007 when the iPhone was introduced, you know, everybody sort of predicted like, oh my God, that's gonna grow the smartphone market by 15%. That, that would be crazy. And what happened is it doubled the market in one year. And then everyone looked at that and said, oh my, that could never happen again. Like, it's gotta be like maybe not 15%, maybe it's 13% this year. And then it doubled again. And that happened right. like year after year after year. I remember when they were really proud of a million iPhone sales a, right. a month. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to see, and my vision is to be in a hundred, to connect 100% of the spaces in enterprise with an incredible magical experience that we talked about. Um, and that everyone in business is connecting and communicating use a, using like a cornucopia of tools, not just like Spark, but you know, all kinds of different things, tuned for their industry, built on an incredible platform. I want Cisco to be the platform that powers that innovation. We can't even imagine what that's gonna deliver. As we open it up to the broader world, you're gonna see it accelerate because it's no longer confined to the behemoth, right, to us. It's all these other incredible companies doing incredible things. That's where my focus is, is enabling that platform to power all those experiences and getting that platform plumbed into my, to my customers uh, and then using that to power the connection of all the spaces. Those are the three things I'm like, just like laser focused on. So I think, uh, no, it's not gonna slow down, it's gonna speed up. Wow. Well, we'll see. Yeah, we yes, will. we will. All right, thanks guys for the Periscope. So we're gonna switch this over to a tweet chat. Uh, use the hashtag Cisco chat and we will join you guys there. Thanks everyone for joining.